It's mid-August and it's typical summer weather in the UK. You're going camping in 10 days' time and you're wondering if it will ever stop raining. Watching the Met Office 10-day trend, you're told there's a 60% chance that it will stay wet, but a 40% chance of a heat wave. How can there be two possible but entirely different outcomes? A similar question was asked more than 60 years ago by American meteorologist Edward Lorenz in the winter of 61. Whilst running simulations of 12 weather variables using a basic computer model, Lorenz wanted to rerun a simulation. To save time, he started from halfway through the simulation instead of the beginning and input the numbers from halfway through a previous printout. The result was an entirely different weather forecast, bearing no resemblance to the outcome from his previous simulation. Initially confused, Lorenz soon realised that the only difference was that the numbers on the printout were shortened to three decimal places, whilst the numbers in the computer memory retained six decimal places. This tiny difference at the start of his revised simulation was enough to eventually generate entirely different weather patterns. This is chaos theory, the idea that tiny changes in initial conditions will escalate into much bigger differences in the future. More than 60 years later, we now use supercomputers that can perform thousands of trillions of calculations every second. Into these computers we feed 200 billion weather observations every day and weather forecasts are improving all the time. Met Office four-day forecasts are now as accurate as our one-day forecasts were 30 years ago. But no matter how advanced our technology, weather forecasts will always be limited by the fact that we will never know an infinite amount about the current state of the atmosphere. That's why modern meteorologists use ensemble forecasts. Supercomputers don't just run one simulation of the future anymore, they now run an ensemble of dozens of simulations. Each time, a small change in initial conditions is made. We can then see what the most likely outcomes are and how sensitive the forecast is to subtle differences towards the start. Sometimes, the outcomes are all very similar, despite those initial differences. We are then able to say we have high confidence in the forecast or that a particular outcome is highly likely. Sometimes the outcomes are very different. We then have less confidence in the forecast. Often we can identify the feature at the start of the forecast that causes the uncertainty. For example, in three days' time, the jet stream is close to the UK, keeping the weather unsettled. At the same time, a hurricane is wandering about over the Atlantic Ocean thousands of miles away. The hurricane won't directly impact the UK, but 40% of model projections show the hurricane pushing the jet stream to the north of the UK by day 7, allowing hot air to arrive from the south. The other 60% of projections keep the hurricane just to the south of the jet stream throughout the next 10 days, with the UK staying unsettled. A subtle difference in the position of an Atlantic hurricane in seven days' time will ultimately decide whether or not it will rain on your tent later next week. Whilst you might need to be aware of both possible outcomes for now, the good news is that it may not be long until the track of the hurricane and its downstream impacts become clearer. The best advice in these kinds of situations is to stay up to date with Met Office forecasts via the website, app and social media. Thank you for watching this video about the benefits of ensemble forecasting and why running multiple simulations of the atmosphere can give us more useful forecasts. If you enjoyed watching this video, check out our Up in the Air playlist for more and make sure you subscribe so you never miss an update. Catch you next week.